Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Me's Bird Pass on YouTube's premium channel about all things women's football and match day number 16, the first round of the knockout stages of the Women's World Cup has just concluded with two very good matches. First of all, we had Spain taking on Switzerland and second of all, we had Japan taking on Norway and we'll get started off with Spain versus Switzerland. And today is a good day because Switzerland have been knocked out of the Women's World Cup. <laughs> okay, that, that's a joke there. Obviously, it's not really something funny considering the emotions of the players and the nation at large but um <laughs> let's get started here so Switzerland up in a 4-1-2-3 formation and Spain lined up in a 4-1-2-3 formation as well and from the get-go it was pretty obvious to see that Spain were the dominant side going into this match as in the fourth minute there was a very good goal scored by Bomati off the back of a very great save by Talman here but unfortunately the defenders were not there to recover enough for Bomati to get there and score the first goal for Spain and for the Swiss side they were unfortunately a little bit too much chaos in the back and the front as the team didn't know whether they were coming or going but luckily for them some miscommunication between Codina the Spanish defender and her goalie led to an own goal to give the Swiss the goal to get themselves back in the game here but it would not last as just three minutes later Spain would make sure that they would get the goal again through Redondo who is having an absolute blast here at the Women's World Cup so far and she did deserve her start today put back Spain on top here and pretty much from here on out it was the Spain show throughout as they scored two more goals before the end of the first half and going to the second half they were already four goals up to just Switzerland's one and going into the second half of the game it was pretty much more of the same from Spain here as they were completely dominant even though Switzerland had shored up their defense more in the second half but that was not enough to prevent a fifth goal from going in the 17th minute through Jenny Hermoso who capitalized on some very sleepy defenders there to cleanly put away the ball and ensure that Spain were going to have a very high margin of victory towards the end of the game here. With the score ending 5-1 in favor of Spain, it is definitely a very good sign that Spain have recovered from their 4-0 humbling at the hands of Japan. And given that most of the players who were injured like likes of Pateas are slowly getting back into form here, they are becoming a more scary dominant opposition to take on here in the quarterfinals of the Women's World Cup as they are beginning to get their whole squad on deck in terms of fitness as well as just general match sharpness here so it's a very good showing here by Spain and hopefully when they go into the quarterfinals they can continue this very good form that they showed in this match and for the Switzerland team here on this channel I've definitely been one of their biggest critics here because I'm not really a fan of how they went about the group stages here of just playing pretty much pragmatic and safe football which is understandable if you want to navigate your way out of the group stages but really when it comes to the knockout stages here of the World Cup you need to show up and even though Switzerland did try to deploy this method against Spain it obviously did not work because you can just look at the scoreline to see that so hopefully Inca Grings can go back to the drawing board and make her team a little bit more dynamic going forward and just in general here so because these kinds of tactics they do work against weaker opposition sides like the ones they faced in the group stages like the Philippines but obviously when they come up against some very strong opposition in Spain it did not work so more effort needs to be put in there by Grings and her coaching team. And in the next game, we had Norway versus Japan, with Norway lining up in a 4-1-2-3 formation and Japan lining up in a 3-4-3 formation, with Japan obviously being the team to beat here in this game, considering that they had the most goals scored so far in the Women's World Cup, as well as having clean sheet after clean sheet. Their goalkeeper had yet to be tested by any of the teams that they faced in the group stages, yeah. And Japan started very strongly here, and Norway were pretty much on the back foot because they had no idea how they were going to deal with the fluidity of Japan here, which eventually did yield a goal, but this one was an own goal rather than a goal by the Japanese team here. After Engen was doing her best to clear her lines for a goalkeeper, but unfortunately she wasn't able to, and it would end up being an early goal for the Nadeshiko here, but luckily it would not last too long, as just five minutes later, Guru Raiten would rise the highest and head it from a beautiful cross to put Norway back on level two terms with Japan and pretty much from the rest of the first half the teams were going back at it here with Japan actually facing some very strong competition from the Norwegian side who had changed their tactics here to not only just be defending but to be going up against the Japanese and using their height advantage against them here but unfortunately for the Norwegians they were unable to get themselves a goal to lead going into the second half of the game and going into the second half would be business as usual for the Japanese as in the 50th minute Shimizu would get in another goal for the Japanese here the first time Japan scored in this match to restore 
restore the lead for them and from this point forward Norway pretty much reverted back to their old tactics here of just trying to defend against the Japanese rather than going at them which was a very huge disadvantage for them as despite their very best attempts to keep them out of the game it was too little too late here as eventually in the 80th minute Miyazawa would go through on goal to make it 3-1 to the Japanese here and this was in spite of some very good opportunities before this goal by the likes of Savic and Monum who tried their best to get Norway back on level terms but unfortunately weren't able to and the game eventually ran out 3-1 to the Nadeshiko here who had fought the quarterfinals alongside Spain. In spite of what was arguably an inevitable loss, Norway did make a very good account of themselves in this game especially after they conceded the first goal in doing their best to change up their tactics which actually yielded some results for them here and it's unfortunate they just couldn't keep it up because Japan is Japan, they're a very well oiled machine and they are just a very good well-rounded team in general here and as for the Norwegians they've done a very good job in showing the next opponents for Japan where the team can be defeated and where the weaknesses are especially when it comes to the physicality of the game here as Norway were definitely the more physical side and it's unfortunate that despite their best attempts Norway weren't very able to get themselves back in the game at least on the scoreboard here as just for example in the 90th minute Roman Hogg had a situation whereby she had hit the ball and it just failed to clear the lines and that's something that could have definitely teetered the game in Norway's favor at least towards the very end but apart from that it was a very good game to watch very entertaining in my opinion way more entertaining than the Switzerland versus Spain game here because it was more even so the teams were very much going at it here with one another and as for japan their dominance just continues they've unfortunately lost the streak of clean sheets here for yamashita but that's fine that's a small little issue there but definitely going into the quarterfinals of the women's world cup it looks very hard for either sweden or the usa to topple japan but stranger things have happened but all the best in adashiga going forward because right now they are the team to beat and those are the things that we learned from the two games on display today the knockout stage of the women's world cup continue tomorrow with the netherlands taking on south africa and sweden taking on the united states and those two matches do promise to be very very interesting to say the least especially sweden versus the united states because the united states as we've seen throughout the world cup so far they're not at the peak of their powers and sweden are definitely one of the more tougher opponents to face up here so it'll definitely be fun to watch but other than that thank you very much for watching please make sure to like share and subscribe and i'll see you in tomorrow's video